Good evening. Welcome to Hastings Mystery Theater. I'm your host and mystery master, Randall Schaefer. Tonight, the corridors of mystery take us to 1942 for a monogram release, A Walking Nightmare. This was later released to television under the title, A Living Ghost. In tonight's movie, millionaire Walter Craig is missing, and private detective Nick Train is hired to find him. Well, he does find him. Alive, but in a zombie-like state. The doctor says he will live, but he may never again regain his full mental capacity. Well, Nick Train suspects that Walter Craig was poisoned, and suspects abound, but the investigation makes him the next target. Our male lead is James Dunn. He was born in New York City in 1901. And by 1930, he was working regularly in movies. But by 1940, alcoholism put his career into decline. He got a big break when he landed a role in the classic A Tree Grows in Brooklyn. And for that, he won an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. He played a loving, alcoholic husband and father, who is adored by his children even though he seldom earns any money to support them. The word around Hollywood was that James Dunn just had to play himself. He died in 1967 at age 66. Our female lead is Joan Woodbury and she was born in LA in 1915. She began making movies at age 19, often playing exotic foreigners. She worked steadily through the 1940s, often in westerns, with William Boyd, Ken Maynard, Roy Rogers, and Johnny Mac Brown. Joan Woodbury made one serial. In 1945, she starred in Brenda Starr, Reporter. She died in 1989 at age 73. Let's return to 1942. Enjoy A Walking Nightmare. How many times must I ask you to go away? Mrs. Craig refuses to see any reporters. We only want a minute. Do you any idea what happened to Mr. Craig? Yeah. Do you have any enemies? All right, you can go in, Cedric. Very good, Mr. Weldon. I appreciate how anxious you boys are for an interview, but Mrs. Craig is under a very severe strain. Who are you? I'm Anthony Weldon, a friend of the family. Well, how about giving us the dope on the case, huh? Yeah, any idea what happened to him? Was there a ransom note? No, no note. You know as much about this as we do. What about the police? Did they find out anything? Not that we know of. Suppose you ask them. Well, look. Could we go in and have just a minute with Mrs. Craig? I'm sorry, but that's impossible. Now, if you boys will show a little consideration, I promise to keep you informed. Otherwise, I shall have to ask the police to keep you away. That's all there is to it. Well, he's a big help. I just call the police. They have nothing to report. Oh, we're getting nowhere. I think we ought to call in a private investigator. What do you think, Mr. Phillips? Well, if everybody else agrees, it's all right with me. Very definite, my dear. That's the kind of initiative I've had to put up with all my life. Oh, please, Aunt dear, you must you always pick on him? What do you think, Charlie? Splendid idea. Anybody particular in mind? Yes, I'd like to get a fellow named Nick Train. He's a good friend of mine. Huh. I thought you'd get a friend of yours to protect my charming stepmother, who is so grief-stricken. Tina, I'm ashamed of you. Oh, it's all right, dear, dear. Tina's overwrought. I know she doesn't need it. Oh. Don't I, though? Don't pay any attention to Tina, Mrs. Craig. She's terribly upset. I know, Billy. Is this Nick Train a good man, Mr. Moline? Oh, he's one of the best. He used to be chief investigator at the district attorney's office. Well, then, by all means, let's get him. Well, that may not be so easy. He gave up the DA's job a long time ago. Oh, 
Said he was fed up with the detective business. What's he doing? Where is he now? Oh, I don't know. I'll have to look him up. Oh, if he's as good as you say, you must get him by all means. I'll do my best. Well, Billy, you'd better come along with me. If Mr. Train agrees to take the case, you'll have to drive him back here. I have some business to attend to in town tonight. Yes, sir. Can I get you something, Mrs. Curry? No, thank you, dear. Will you be leaving right away, Mr. Lee? Right away. I'll go right with you. A gag is that? You got me, but if I know Nick, it must be a pip. What sort of a fellow is he? He's a little on the eccentric side. A little? Clever men usually are. Come on here, Hazel. Come on. Sit down now. Nice dog. Hello, brother. Hi, sister. We can send a fine across the tone all the time from side across from the east and find a four. I'm quite him tapping and high. I beg your pardon. Here, Hito. We didn't see the fine, the talking aside, the fellow sitting aside, the fourth floor, and the cuts from the end, the side of court, and the head on the high, because they were walking aside, the fine. Don't you think? I, I'm sure I don't know. I... Don't know? Well, suppose we go inside and find out. <laughs> that wouldn't be Brother Train, would it? No, he's not that eccentric. Well, I had to go. Boom, boom, boom. Couldn't imagine. Couldn't find a side. Sure, I'll find a side. And I couldn't imagine for the. Ah! 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 
just a matter of routine. You know, I always do that. I set the alarm. When the customer comes in, I turn it off. The time's up, and I've made another $2. <laughs> what goes on? What are you supposed to be? Promise not to laugh? Yeah. I'm a professional listener. Yeah. Come again? <laughs> I charge $2 an hour and listen to people's troubles. Why do people tell you their troubles? Well, because nobody can keep the troubles to themselves. There's nobody to talk to, so they come to me and I listen sympathetically. What's the gag? It's no gag at all. It's on the level. Makes them feel better and I make a living without raising my blood pressure. Is this uh, part of your racket or uh, did you just have a shampoo? Huh? Oh, this. <laughs> just a little professional touch. Makes me look like a swami. <laughs> Very impressive, don't you think? Abdul's Turkish bath. Right now I have more of these towels than Abdul has. <laughs> What's on your mind, Ed? Walter Craig's disappeared. We're afraid he's been kidnapped. Yeah, I read about it. We need your help. Oh, no soap, Ed. I quit all that a long time ago. Now, wait a minute. Now, this is different. Breath. I tell you, I'm through. So this is the famous Nick Train you've been raving about. Doesn't look to me as though he could find his way through a glass door. But oh, you're wrong, Billy. Nick has mopped up many big cases. Scotch or bourbon? Oh, no, he had quite a rep when he quit. If he was so good, why did he quit? That doesn't make sense to me. Sweet little wench, isn't she? Well, if you must know, sister, I quit the business because I get tired of spending all my time with murderers and thieves. You have to send your uh, diploma back to the correspondence school when you stop detecting, brother? Oh, Billy, I think that Mr. Train must have had his reasons for refusing. You're darn right I have. But I can imagine. How would it look in the papers? Great Nick Train comes out of retirement to solve mysterious disappearance and flops. Oh, yeah? Well, let me tell you something. There never was a case I couldn't crack. Why, what big talk. Well, if you're not afraid, why don't you crack this case? How about it, Nick? What do you say? Oh, I'd be crazy to go back on that detective racket. Go back? Billy. Oh, that's too bad, Nick. Mrs. Craig is quite willing to pay quite a large fee. Say nothing of the $25,000 reward. $25,000. $25,000? Huh, of course, money means nothing to me. Now, I know you're a sap. There never was an ear on anybody that wasn't sympathetic to that tune. No? No. Well, here's two. One here and one here. Do you see them? Mm-hmm. With a vacuum in the middle. That last crack leaves me with just two choices. Either I take the case or I take you over my knee. You wouldn't have the nerve to do either. Oh, wouldn't I? No. Well, before I get through, I'll do both. Right now, I'll take the case. Please. Oh, great step, Nick. Let's go. <laughs> Billy will take you down to Craig's. Well, sister, your little ribbing act was quite amusing. <laughs> now, let's get down to business. How long have you worked for Mr. Craig? Two years. He and my father were great friends. When Dad died, he offered me a job as his secretary. Is he a nice fellow? He's one of the best. Gentle and considerate. How come you live with the Craigs? Well, he conducts his business from his home. It's much more convenient that way. I'll bet it is. I'd ask you to go to work for me if I thought you'd live at my house. You work fast, don't you? Well, if I work too fast, tell me where to get off. Okay, you can get off right here. What? Because here we are. <laughs> This is Mr. Train. I'm glad you're here, Mr. Train. Thanks. Mr. and Mrs. Phillips. How do you do? How do you train. do? Mrs. Phillips is Mr. Craig's sister. And Tina, Mr. Craig's daughter. Her fiancé, Arthur Wallace. How do you do? How do you do? And Tony Weldon, Mr. Craig's closest friend. A pleasure. Now you're here, perhaps we'll get someplace. Perhaps. But first, I'd like to find out what each of you know about this. If you think I'm going to submit to a cross-examination tonight, you're sadly mistaken. Good, good night. Now see what you did. What did I do? What's eating them anyway? Oh, please forgive her. She's been under a great strain. We all have been. Perhaps it would be better to wait till morning. Good night's sleep will do us all some good. That's okay with me. I'm in a hurry. Would you have Cedric show Mr. Train to his room? Sir. And now, if you'll pardon me, I'll go to my room, too. Hate and death are in this house. If you're wise, you leave right now. Come along, George. Is she on the level? Yes, but she doesn't need a thing. Delia thinks she has psychic powers. There isn't a cult that she doesn't belong to. Looks like she'd make a good zombie. <laughs> You'll get used to her. Well, I think I'll be getting home. You live far from here? No, just out and back in the guest house. If you get a chance tomorrow, drop in. I'd like to talk to you. Thanks, I will. Good night. Good night, Miss Hilton. Good night. I'm beginning to think that everybody around here is a little bit nutty except us. And I have my doubts about us. Want me to drive you back to your listening post? Very funny, very funny. Supposing you tell me all you know. Go ahead, I'm listening. 
$2 an hour? No, this one's on me. When was Mr. Craig last seen? Uh, night before last. He went to his room about 11 o'clock. No one's seen or heard from him since. Well, didn't his wife hear him get up? No, they have different rooms. Oh, personally, I don't go for that kind of a marriage. Where were you then? I was in my room. What were you doing? I was in dressing. What's that got to do with it? Oh, nothing, just a healthy curiosity. Well, please go ahead, as they say, in the DA's office. Very well. In the morning, the butler found Mr. Craig's bed hadn't been slept in. And you haven't had word of him since? No. Everyone's at their wit's end. Judging from what I saw here tonight, they didn't have far to go. Mr. Craig! Just call me Nick. How long have the Craigs been married? Three years. Mr. Craig lost his first wife when Tina was 12. Tina, that's the little spitfire at the start of the walkout, huh? Yes. No love lost between them, I take it. An amazing bit of deduction, Mr. Train. Allow me to congratulate you. Oh, I'm very clever that way. You'll get used to me. Where did you hide the body? Why? Why, for two pins, I'd slug you. Oh, I don't take it that way. I just thought if you killed him, I'd find out right away and save a lot of time around here. Mr. Train, do I look like a murderer? Mm, no. But you look very interesting. I ought to twist that sympathetic ear of yours. What? And deprive me of my living? You rang, Miss Hilton? Yes, Cedric. Will you please show Mr. Train to one of the guest rooms? Very good, Miss. Will you follow me, sir? I'd prefer it that way. Well, so long. I'll, uh, I'll see you in my dreams. If I see you in mine, it'll be a nightmare. <laughs> Here you are, sir. Okay, that'll do. Very good, sir. Oh, uh, hey, you, C Cedric, how much do you charge to haunt a house? I don't know, sir. How much do you usually charge? <laughs> oh, a drip, huh? He's alive, all right. Better get a doctor right away. Martha, get a doctor, quick. Yes. Somebody help me carry him up to his room. Allow me, sir. Don't you ever sleep? No, sir. Insomnia. Insomnia, huh? I bet he's got it so bad he can't even sleep when it's time to get up. Well, good morning, Miss Malia. Good morning, sir. Claire's everybody. In the living room, sir. Thanks. Good morning, Ellen. Oh, Ed, this is terrible, terrible. Oh, there, there. Now, I'm sure he's going to be all right. Hello, Tina. Hello, Arthur. Hello, Nick. What did the doctor say? I don't know yet. He's still upstairs with him. Strange, very strange. What do you make of it? You got me, but a guy doesn't walk out of this house in the middle of the night and come back in that condition without somebody pulling a fast one. Yeah. I warned you last night, young man, but you wouldn't listen. The ascended spirit is ordained to punish. You said it, sister. That which is ordained is ordained. The truth will burn its mark upon the spirit. That which is ordained is ordained. In ascendance will be found complete perfection. That which is ordained is ordained. We will talk again, Mr. Train. Yeah, man. I mean, sister.
somebody comes around here with a butterfly net, I'll know who they're after. <laughs> <laughs> How is he, Doctor? Well, I can't tell you. I've never seen a case quite like this one. So I hesitate to make a diagnosis without consultation. Well, is, is he in pain? No, there is no pain. But, Doctor, what happened to him? I'm sorry to say that Mr. Craig has suffered a severe brain injury. Brain injury? Yes. I'll arrange with Dr. Bruling, a brain specialist, to see him at once. Until then, I can tell you nothing. Oh, poor Walter. Oh, Doctor. I'd like to have a little talk with you. Yes, Mr. Train. What do you think about the, uh, the... Let's go in the library. Say, Doc, did you find any evidence of violence? No, nothing at all. Strictly between us, what do you think of his chances? I can't tell. Can't or won't? I can't. I'm the sympathetic listening ear around here, Jeeves. I beg your pardon, sir. Okay. Why must there be a butler in every murder mystery? I'm sorry, Doc. Do you think Mr. Craig could have come back to this house by himself in his present condition? There's no evidence of paralysis. He can probably walk, but I doubt if he came back here unassisted. Well, thanks, Doc. That's all I wanted to know. That's quite all right. That makes two of us. Nick, how could this have all happened? I don't know. If Craig had an autopsy, it would establish time and cause of death. But as it is in his present condition, we've got nothing to go by. If we could only find out why. Yeah, that's the rub. If we can find out why, then we're getting someplace. Footprints. Somebody must have carried Craig through this window last night. You think it's someone in this house? Now, nah, don't try to pin me down. I'm only guessing. Those look like prints made from rubber overshoes. I wonder who they could be. That's where you come in. Try and find the shoes that fit those prints. What are you two doing? Oh, just talking about the weather. Incidentally, where were you during the rain last night? In bed. I'm asleep. Can you prove it? I regret to say no. I sleep too long. <laughs> Kind of lonesome, isn't it? Uh, nice shoes you've got on. Brand new, aren't they? Yeah. Say, what do my shoes got to do with this? Oh, nothing. I hope. Well, I'll be back in a jiffy. I just want to talk to somebody. Come here. Come on, boy. Come on, get in the house. Sorry, Mr. Train. Flitch barks a lot, but... I know he wouldn't bite you. <laughs> but does he know it? <laughs> Say, how about that? Yeah. Truly, come on inside. Sit down. Thanks. Smoke? Sure. You know, I can't tell you how shocked I am about Walter. Best friend I have. When the doctor made me quit work on account of my heart, Walter insisted that I come here and live. That was nice of him. Poor chap. You know, I'd give him my right arm to be able to help him. Well, since you know him so well, suppose you tell me something about him. Oh, Walter's a fine man. Generous and good to a fault. He was pretty lonely after the death of his first wife, and about three years ago, he married Helen. Met her in Moline's office, but... Moline's office? Yes, she was his secretary. The Craigs are, oh, I guess you'd call it snobbish, and it wasn't very easy for her at first. But she came through like a trooper, and now everybody likes her. Yeah? There seems to be two trains a thought on that subject. Oh, if it's Tina you're referring to, that's because she's young and I regret to say selfish. How about the Phillips? Well, George Phillips has been a failure all his life. He's made a bitter woman of Delia. One reason she turned to cults. Have there been any clashes between members of the family? Not to my knowledge. Well, with the exception of Tina and her stepmother. Well, I guess I'd better get back. Well, if I can be of any further service. Thanks, I may call on you. Oh, 
Nick, where in the world have you been? We've been looking all over for you. Do Dr. Bruling, the specialist, is here. He's upstairs with Dr. Taggart now. Good. I want to talk to them alone. Oh, Ed, if Craig died, who'd inherit the estate? Most of it would go to Tina. Why? Oh, oh nothing. I'm sorry to bust in this way, but I'd like to have a few words with Dr. Bruling. This is Mr. Train. Mrs. Craig has engaged him as a special investigator. Hi, Doc. Doc. What's wrong with him? Mr. Craig may not regain possession of his mental faculties for perhaps a year or two. Poor guy. It isn't amnesia, is it? No, no, no. In Mr. Craig's case, the cells of the cortex of the brain are paralyzed. Well, how could that happen? <laughs> I'm a doctor, young man, not a clairvoyant. Does he have to stay in bed? Oh, no, no. He can walk, but he shouldn't be permitted to do so alone. Therefore, he'll require constant watching. Okay, Doc. Thanks a lot. Oh, hello, Mr. Wallace. What's on your mind? Where can we talk? Huh? I say, where can we talk? Oh, come into my room. Go ahead, shoot. Mr. Train, in view of what happened, I think you ought to know everything. Yeah, I agree with you there. Well, if it wasn't for Mr. Craig being found in that condition this morning, I wouldn't have thought anything about it. Neither would I. Then you know? Or what? What I'm about to tell you. Oh, for the love of Mike, get to the point. So far you've told me nothing except that you didn't want to tell it to me. Well, that's right, I didn't. But the more I thought of it, the more convinced I became that you had a right to know. To know what? Spill it, will you? Spill it. Oh, please, please, it's not so loud. He'll hear it. Who hear what? What is this, a game? If it is, let me in on it. I'll play. Do you know who I saw in the garden late last night? I'll bite, Mr. Bones. Who did you see in the garden late last night? George Phillips. Are you sure? Certainly. I, I could see him clearly from my window. Doesn't anybody sleep around here at night? Well, the banging of the shutters woke me, and when I went to close them, I saw him. Was he alone? As far as I could see. Do you... Can you possibly conceive that George Phillips was the one who... Who, who brought Craig back? I don't know. Oh, imagine George doing that to Mr. Craig. It's too monstrous to conceive. I guess that's why you thought of it. Well, I, I must go now. You won't say anything about this to anyone, will you? I wouldn't tell a soul. Not even George. He might not like it. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, Nick, I... Oh, hello, Mr. Wallace. How do you do, Miss Hilton? Say, those are my overshoes. What are you doing with them? Oh, I, I just thought I might be going out tonight. In case it rained, I'd be all ready. Well, you might at least have asked me for them. Nick, Nick, those, those shoes match the prints we saw in the garden. No kidding. Yeah. Well, why did you give them to him? Why did I give them to him? He just took them away from me while you stood there looking like a dope. How was I supposed to know that those were the rubber shoes? Well, what do you think I was doing, collecting for the rubber drive? All right, all right. Anybody would think we were married the way you yell at me. Say, hey, that's funny. Do you know why he was here? Give you a written confession, I suppose. Oh, cut the sarcasm. Where's Philip's room? Down the hall by the staircase. Well, let's go down the hall by the staircase. Oh, Mr. Phillips, I'd like to talk to you. Not here. Meet me in the garden at 8 o'clock. I beg your pardon, sir. Dracula, the buttons for you could certainly show up at the most inopportune times. Come on. Mr. Craig, what have you done? Phillips. Oh, Mr. Craig, why did you ever want to do... Mr. Craig, how in the world did you ever do... Say, 
What's the big idea? That's what I want to find out. Now start talking and fast. What do you mean? Oh, don't play any dumber than you are. Did you kill George? George? George dead? Oh, I don't believe it. Well, if you don't believe it, go and ask him. He's over there. I, I don't know anything about it. Oh, of course not. And I suppose you're wearing gloves on a warm night because you don't want to soil your hands shooting people. But he was stabbed. Oh, if you didn't know he was dead, how did you know he was stabbed, not shot? Well, I... I, I don't know. I, I... Yeah, you just guessed it. Well, I'll give you a chance to explain it to the police. The car want to find out anything, Pete? Just that he's dead. Great. That makes it official. It's a funny thing, but no sooner do you get back in this racket than someone gets killed. Maybe my face scared him into suicide. Yeah, maybe it did. <laughs> All right, Junior, what have you got to say for yourself? Yeah, yeah, all we want is a signed confession. We can all go home. You can't intimidate me. I know my rights. I won't say anything without a lawyer. <laughs> he wants a lawyer. Well, maybe he doesn't trust us. Come on, Buster, start talking. I'm here to do business. My name is not Buster. It's Arthur Wallace. A very pretty name. But it doesn't explain why you killed Philip. I didn't kill him. I had nothing to do with it. What were you doing in the garden? I went there to meet Tina, Miss Cray. What about your gloves? Well, I, I just driven up. I have an open car. And you always wear your gloves when you drive? Yes. How did you know? Look, this is a very simple matter. Just tell me why you bumped the guy off. I refuse to say any more without a lawyer. What did you do with your rubber booties? I... I won't answer that. Maybe he used them to vulcanize his tires. <laughs> I never thought of that. Okay, you can go now. But don't leave the house. Call Miss Craig, will you? This murder ties up with what happened to old man Craig. When we crack one, we'll crack the other. What's Craig got to do with Phillips? Well, I found the old man standing over Phillips' body. This is a fine time to tell me. I'm going to get him. What for? What for? Put him under arrest, that's what for. Oh, you might as well arrest those goldfish. Why? He doesn't know any more what it's all about than they do. What do you mean? I mean he's non compass menace. That's so. What's that? Well, he eats and sleeps all right, but he's in a fog. The guy's batty? And how. But if you ask me, that's just a cover-up. He was planted there. Uh-oh, here comes the personality kid. Did you want to see me? Mm-hmm. Sit down, Miss Craig. I'd rather stand, if you don't mind. It's okay with me. Your boyfriend's in a jam. A lame brain like you would get anybody in a jam. You wouldn't know a murderer if he had a sign on his back. Looks like she knows you, Nick. Are you supposed to beat Buster tonight? If you're referring to my fiancé, yes. When? At 8 o'clock. Where? In the garden. Why the garden? Well, I saw Billy examining his rubber shoes, and knowing how she feels about you, I figured it was for your benefit. What do you mean, uh, <clears throat> how she feels about me? Don't get all swelled up, Mr. Train. Billy never did have any taste to speak of. Come on, let's get on with this. Where were you between dinner and 8 o'clock? Went to my room and stayed there until 10 minutes of 8. Then I went down to the library, but no one was around, so I went back, back upstairs. I stayed there until 8 o'clock. How did you know the exact time? I learned to tell time at the age of 5. Anyway, when I came back downstairs, Sherlock Holmes here was playing cops and robbers with my fiancé. Anything you want to say? Plenty. But it wouldn't be fit for her dainty little ears. If you masterminds would question my sweet stepmother, you might get somewhere. We intend to, lady. We intend to. Okay, you can go now. Thank you. Isn't she sweet, though? Tell us, where are we after dinner? Why, I went back to my cottage and stayed there until Cedric told me what had happened, and then I hurried here. Anybody in your cottage with you? Just Blitz. We'll question that Blitz guy next. Finnegan, go get Mr. Blitz. Blitz is Mr. Welland's dog. Why don't someone tell me these things? Where did you go after dinner? I went into the library. Were you there all the time? Yes, until I had Arthur and Nick arguing in the garden. That was about five minutes after eight, wasn't it? I think so. Anybody come into the library while you were there? No. How come Tina Craig didn't see you when she went in the library at quarter of eight? Well, I must have been looking at those books. Because you weren't in the library. You were out taking Philip's temperature with a knife. That's ridiculous. Why should I want to kill George? That's just what I want to find out. Now, look, Ed. Either you're lying or Tina Craig is. Which is it? All right, I did leave the library. Where'd you go? Out into the garden. Did you see George Phillips? 
Yes, he appeared nervous and he walked away as I approached him. So I let him alone and then I came back into the house. Why didn't you tell us this before? Because I didn't want to lay myself open to suspicion. That don't sound kosher to me. You must admit it wasn't very bright on your part, Ed. Oh, perhaps not, but it's the truth. Okay, you can go now. Oh. Why do I get mixed up in these things? Why can't it be like the good old days? When a murderer killed somebody, he was mad and left a flock of fingerprints. Look, honey, tell Dr. Bruling Nick Train wants to see him right away. Have you an appointment? No, but this is very important. All of Dr. Bruling's cases are important. Just what's wrong with you? Now listen, sister. Dr. I... Bruling insists that I find out as much as I can from the patients before he sees them. Okay, if you insist. That will be enough. Well, you asked me. Besides, I thought nurses knew all about those things. Dr. Bruling says he would. <laughs> I thought he would. <clears throat> Hello, Mr. Trey. Hi, Doc. <laughs> What's this nonsense you've been telling my nurse that your wooden leg needs lubricating? Well, I, she insisted I had to tell her something. <laughs> I thought as much. Sit down. Now, what's on your mind? Well, Dr. Bruling, yesterday you said something had happened to the cortex cells of Mr. Craig's brain. What did you mean by that? Well, in some way, Mr. Craig has been what we doctors call decorticated, which means that a portion of the brain has been temporarily paralyzed. No kidding. Well, how could that happen to one part of the brain and not the rest? Well, perhaps I can explain it to you by the aid of this chart. Come this way. As man developed during millions of years, so did the brain. As man found more functions to the body, the brain kept pace. Cells were developed to do new jobs. And the last of these cells were those of the cortex, which we refer to as the cortex cerebrate. Now these cortex, uh, they control the thinking, speaking, and all those things which man learned last. And as they were developed last, they were therefore the youngest and they've always been the weakest, and they die before any other part of man's body. Now, young man, you get it? Well, I, I think so. So that's how it happened to Mr. Craig, huh? Exactly. Only in Mr. Craig's case, the cells are not dead, merely paralyzed. Well, um, this decortication, or whatever you call it, can this be done deliberately? That's the only way it can be done. Well, how is it done? Well, you see, these cells require a great deal of oxygen. If while an anesthetic is being administered, certain chemicals are added and the oxygen is cut too low, then the cortex cells are paralyzed. So you think that's what happened to Mr. Craig, huh? From my analysis, yes. Just exactly that. Can a thing like this happen accidentally? No. Never. Well, thanks, Doctor. I think you've given me a pretty good idea what it's all about. Glad to be of any service. Oh, uh, one more thing, Doc. Could Mr. Craig have stabbed Phillips? There's no telling what a man in Mr. Craig's condition could do. Well, thanks, Doc. Some lubricator, Doc. Good for another thousand miles. talent. I also play the Victrola. Now I'm really impressed. Where's everybody tonight? Well, let's see. Cedric's somewhere in the house. Helen's gone to bed and is resting. Delia's also gone to bed, having felt very badly all day. Tina and Arthur probably holding hands in some cozy corner, and Tony and Mr. Molina are upstairs having decided to stay with the family until the case is cleared up. Here I am, there you are, which reminds me, Sherlock, where have you been all day? Huh? Oh, don't tell anybody, but I tracked down the murderers, two of them. No! Yeah. I trailed them to the hideout, but they discovered me. There was no escape. I didn't have a gun. They started to shoot at me. Oh, how did you get away? I didn't. I was killed. Oh, Joe! <laughs> Murder! <laughs> and I had to fall for no one like that. Is that the only thing you fell for? Exactly what do you mean? Well, um, Dame Rumor hath it that thou art that way about me. To put it subtly, Dame Rumor is nothing. Tina would resent that. Tina? 
So Laughing Girl's been making up stories about me, has she? She's right. Billy. Yes, I am that way about you, my love. In a way that wouldn't be fit to print. <laughs> Nick. Oh, oh. Ah! Bill, well? Oh, Nick. Whoa. Mr. Craig. Oh, Nick. Gee, that was close. Oh, Nick, I tried to warn you, but I lost my voice. Well, next time, put us someplace where you can find it, quick. Another second, I've been wearing that for a collar button. Walter! Mr. Craig! What have you done to my father? What have I done? A second before that landed, I was sitting in the chair, and he was on the business end of that night. Good heavens, Nick, you don't mean to say he tried to kill you. Well, he wasn't going to give me a shave. Well, I can't understand it. Walter's always been such a gentle sort of a person. Allow me, please. Just a minute. How did Mr. Craig get out of his room? I don't know. I left the room for just a few minutes to go to the kitchen to get some orange juice. When I got back, he was gone. Well, next time you leave the room, get somebody to take your place. Yes, sir. Nick. Nick, I'm scared. That's all right. So am I. Mr. Craig's residence. Who? Oh, just a moment, please. It's for you, Lieutenant Peterson. Hello, Pete. Did you get the information I asked you for? Good. What'd you say the name was? Parson? No, Carson. C-A-R-S-O-N. Dr. J.B. Carson. He ordered the outfit by phone three weeks ago. Paid for it by money order. Said he was opening a sanitarium. He did? Where? Blakely Road? What's the number? Make a note of this, 689 Blakely Road. And he left instructions that if no one was there to leave it anyway, which they did. Nobody's even seen him? Well, that's a big help. Say, Nick, what's this all about, anyway? I'll tell you later, Pete. Thanks. So long. Where's the extension here? Somebody listened in. I heard the click. It's upstairs in the hall. Who was on that phone just now? I wouldn't know, sir. I just came out of Mr. Craig's room. You sure? Yes, sir. I don't start collecting my old age pension. It won't be that guy's fault. Where are you taking me? To see a doctor. I'm not sick. Well, you may be after you see this fella. His name is Dr. Carson, and I have a hunch he's the answer to our problem. Who's Dr. Carson? I don't know. But Pete told me he bought a cyclopropane outfit under strange circumstances. A cyclopro what outfit? Cyclopropane. It's an anesthetic machine. What's anesthetics got to do with this case? Well... I'll get Dr. Booling to explain that to you someday, beautiful. Anyway, this Carson took over an old dilapidated house and said he was turning it into a sanitarium. What's so strange about that? Well, the strange part is he's not listed in any of the medical directories or even in the telephone book. Then how are you going to know how to find him? Pete told me. Must be it. There's no other place for miles around. Funny looking sanitarium. Yeah, maybe it isn't a sanitarium at all. Maybe he's not a doctor either. I'll bet this is one place George Washington really slept in. Yeah, and it was probably an antique even then. Those boards must have come off the front door. Somebody's been using this dump lately. Come on, let's try and get in. Oh, must we? Why not? You'll never find out what's inside if we don't. That won't make me mad. Oh, don't be a softy. I can't see a thing. What do we do now? Well, let's roam around. Maybe something will turn up. That's what I'm afraid of. I bet you could rent this joint cheap. Remember that name and address. Personally, I'd like something a little more modern. I'm not thinking of renting it. I may want to talk to this guy Hawkins.
Boy, what a break. Now we can get in that open window up there. You mean you're actually gonna go into this house? Why not? <laughs> Why not, he says. Let go of it, what do you think I am, a midget? Hey, Nick. Nick, what? there's a storm coming up, and I haven't even got a coat. Let's go away now and come back some nice, bright, sunny day, huh? Not me, I'm going up. You wait down here. Wait? Alone? Oh, no, brother, I'm coming with you. Look, don't, don't ever do that again. I'm sorry, Nick, but I saw something out the window. Where? Up there. There's nothing there. I could have sworn I saw something moving. Oh, you must be seeing things. I hope. Oh, Nick, look, let's go home before we get drenched, please. Oh, quiet. Oh, hey, wait a minute, wait for me. Don't be silly. We're going to search this place from top to bottom. Yeah, I was afraid of that. Don't do that. Why not? How am I going to run if you're holding on to me? Billy, don't do that. Oh, I'm sorry, Nick. I only wanted to ask you if you saw anything. No. Just goes to show you what funny tricks your imagination can play on you. Even funnier when both our imaginations play the same trick. Yeah. What's that? What's what? That. Must be mice. I wish you'd tell them to take their boots off. Time for playing. Who's playing? <laughs> Let's call it a day and go home, huh? All right. But first, I want to have a look down the cellar. With here. You satisfied now? Yeah, I guess so. Looks like a wild goose chase. Yeah. Oh! Stay here.
Let me out. Let me out. Open the door here. Open the door. What's the matter, Nick? It's all right, honey. Let me out. Let me out of here. Nick, what's the matter? What happened, Nick? Somebody locked us in. What are you going to do? I don't know. That looks like the only way out. Well, we might as well make ourselves comfortable. Looks like we're going to be here a long time. How long? Until hmm? somebody finds us. Well, that might take weeks. Maybe months. By that time, beautiful, it won't make any difference. We might starve to death. If we don't go mad from thirst before that. Darling. Sit down. Billy, now that the end is near, there's something I want to tell you. Oh, don't talk like that, Nick. Well, we may as well face the truth unflinchingly. But before I die, I want you to know that, that I love you. And just being near you, well, makes me unafraid of death. Oh, Nick. Darling. Oh, darling, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean half the things I said. I, I guess I was just fighting against my feelings for you. I've loved you, Nick. I've loved you right from the start. Oh, darling. <laughs> well, that's all I wanted to know. Let's get out of here. Get out of here? How? Why, just open the door and walk out. <laughs> oh, the love. Why, I got to take it easy. There's no sense getting mad. Besides, uh, I had to find out if you love me, didn't I? I may never get a chance like that again. As if I could love any man like you. <laughs> Honey, don't spoil it. It was a beautiful moment. Admit it. Something you'll be proud to tell of our children. Our children? I wouldn't contaminate the human race with our children. All right, all right. Let's finish it after we're married. Right now, I've got to go after that guy, Carson. Why, the idea of taking advantage of a girl like that. I... I don't want anything more to do with you. I never want to hear the name Trey again. I never... Can't you speak? Why? He's just like Craig. Carson must have practiced on him. That cinches it. Come on, we've got work to do. Well, what about him? Oh, yeah. I'll lock him up and send Peterson right down here. You go out and get in the car. All right. Come on, pal. Homer Hawkins, realtor, justice of the peace, deputy sheriff, air raid warden, and banjo lessons. <laughs> I wonder what he does in his spare time. This guy rented a house to Carson. He ought to know what he looks like. He probably took a shot at us, too, waking him up at this hour. <laughs> just a minute. Just a minute. Want to get married while we're here? No, thank you. When I get married, I'll do it in style. Organ, orange blossoms, bridal veil, the whole works. Kind of expensive. But when I crack this, I'll have 25 Gs. You think that'll cover the work? Yeah, but not right away. Um, are you Mr. Hawkins? Yep. Homer Hawkins, that's me. Well, tell me. Did you sell or rent a place on Blakely Road to a Dr. J.B. Carson? Carson? Carson, yes. Rent in the Greeley place about three weeks ago. Got a year's lease and six months rent in advance, too. My, my, this is... Yep. I'm getting worried about my income tax now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what does Carson look like? I don't know. Never saw him. Well, you said you rented in the place. I did, over the phone. Sent me the money by mail, and I put the keys in the mailbox for him. What did he say when he called you up? Well, he said he was Dr. Carson and wanted to rent the house on Blakely Road. Would you uh, recognize his voice if you heard it again? I reckon I would. Sure. He's got pretty keen ears, don't... Well, thanks, Mr. Hawkins. I'll see you again. Maybe you can help me catch this bird. Say, did anybody ever tell you you look just like Skippy? <laughs> <laughs>
Well, that's something. At least we found someone who knows Carson's voice. What's Carson's voice got to do with it? Well, maybe we can find out who he is through his voice. That's a good idea. Why don't we have Mr. Hawkins come for dinner? Then we can invite everybody in town, too, and make him say, this is Dr. Carson. I want to rent the house on Blakely Road. Don't be funny. <laughs> say, you've given me a great idea, sweetheart. What? Quiet, I'm thinking. How are we going to wake everybody up? I can scream. Oh, no, don't do that. They'll think somebody else is being murdered. Wait a minute. That ought to do it. everyone in the house. At this hour, there's no time to lose, Buster. Stop calling me Buster. My name is Arthur, Arthur Wallace. Arthur Wallace. I know. A very pretty name. Let's go in the living room where there's more room. Go ahead and light the lights, will you, Jeeves? Come on, everybody. Sit down, everybody, please. I've got a wild idea, too wild to explain fully. Trust you for that. I want to make a recording of everybody's voice. A recording at this time of the night? You must be insane. If you think I'm going to play games at this time of the night, you've got another guest coming. I'm going back to sleep. So am I. Now, wait a minute. Now, get this and get it straight, all of you. I was hired for a purpose, and I'm tired of fooling around. Now, I mean business, do you understand? Either you cooperate with me, or I'll put a lot of you in jail, and don't think I can't do it either. Now, sit down. Well, you must admit that what you're asking is rather strange. That's putting it mildly. I agree. However, if there's anything that we can do to help, I'm quite sure we're all willing to cooperate. Well, I'm not. Good, that's settled. Well, might we ask the reason for all this, Mr. Crane? Certainly. I have a hunch this will show us who's responsible for Mr. Crane's condition and Philip's murder. If that's the case, Mr. Train, we'll be glad to do anything you want. I thought you would. Now, I'd like to have each one of you step up to this microphone and speak naturally so it sounds like a voice over the phone. Is is there anything in particular you'd like us to say? Yeah, I'd like to have you say, this is Dr. Carson. I want to rent the house on Blakely Road. Who wants to make the first recording? Oh, I'll be the first guinea pig. Oh, thanks, Ed. Here. Now say, this is Dr. Carson. I want to rent the house on Blakely Road. Uh, this is oh, Dr. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. All right, go ahead. This is Dr. Carson. I'd like to rent the house on Blakely Road. This is Dr. This is Dr. Carson. I want to rent the house on uh, Blakely Road. This is Dr. Carson. I want to rent the house on Blakely Road. This, Dr. Carson. I want to rent the house on Blakely Road. Thanks, Jeeves. This is a lot of childish nonsense. Who is this Dr. Carson? I'll tell you in the morning. Good night, everybody, and thanks. I think we got it. So it's you, sonny boy. You shouldn't go around ruining good pillars like that. Oh, so you want to play, huh? Give me the police department. I want to talk to Lieutenant Peterson. So you're in it too, huh, beautiful? Nice work, kid. I'll get you a police badge for this. <laughs> oh. Oh, hello, Pete. I'm sorry to keep you waiting, but I think you better get over here right away. Yeah, Craig's house. Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you.
All right, take him away. Come on, that means you. Just imagine Tony and Helen being in this thing together. I still can't understand why they did it. The reason is simple. Tina was left the estate in Craig's will, so Helen wouldn't get a thing if he died. But with him alive and temporarily incapable of handling his affairs, Helen would have complete charge of the estate and could do whatever she wanted. How did Weldon figure it out? Mrs. Craig was in love with him. Craig found it out, so Weldon put him in that condition. Well, how did you know that they were in love? I didn't until she admitted it after taking a shot at me. But why was Uncle George killed? He saw Tony Weldon sneaking out of the house the morning your father was brought back. So Tony killed him to keep him from talking. Well, what about Dr. Carson? Dr. Carson and Tony are one and the same. Ah, so that's the reason for the recording. Right. I figured if I could scare the murderer into believing the recordings would give him away, that uh, he'd try to get rid of the records and meet and it worked out perfectly. That's what I call being on the beam, huh? Well, I guess I'm just a sap after all. Putting the finger on a woman that was going to pay me 25 Gs. Well, there goes our future, honey. I'm sorry. I guess I owe you an apology for the way I treated you, Mr. Train. Would a check for $25,000 take care of that? Would a check for 25... What? Say, you're a honey after all. Put it there. <laughs> Come on, we got a little business for Hawkins. Oh, but darling, I want to get married with all the trimmings. I'll give you the trimmings and marry. Come on, Pete, I need you for a witness. $25,000. <laughs> Come on. You don't know what you're in for. I don't know what I'm in for, huh? <laughs> Come on, honey. <clears throat> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Seems to me I promised you something else when I took this case. What did you promise me, darling? Oh, no, you wouldn't dare. Wouldn't I? Oh, no, Nick! Well, anyway, <laughs> you're starting off right. Well, did you like the movie? I hope so, because me, my wife Judy, and production manager Dan LeClaire, we enjoy bringing you these old black and white murder mysteries from the 1930s and 40s. And if you enjoy seeing them as much as we enjoy presenting them, we invite you to join us every Thursday and Friday night at 7 p.m. and other times during the week as our schedule allows. You can see the best of them right here, black and white murder mysteries on Hastings Mystery Theater. Good evening.